Hey folks, Jonathan. Uh, back working on the uh, engine for the 55, the Perkins engine. And what I'm going to do, uh, some of you may have seen on the rat rod belt and some may not, but what I'm going to do is change this clutch fork actually to the other side of the bell housing. Luckily, there's two openings and there's actually inside when you pull the transmission off, there's two places where you can put the ball that the clutch fork pivots on. And the reason we're doing this is we're gonna go with a hydraulic clutch and you know, a hydraulic clutch pushes and having a starter over here, there's no room over here to to mount one to put this fork and or put the, the slaves on it to be able to push the uh, clutch fork. So when we move it to this side, uh, this cover comes off and we actually use the bolt holes in the uh, the side of the bell housing and I think I extended on the fork a little bit I can always go back and look at the video but uh, that's what we're gonna do today and then uh, we're gonna get this engine set in and this will be the the final set in we'll put it in and that'll be the permanent mount for it and we can work around it from there all right we're gonna get this apart and I'll show you as I go okay I figured I'd show you what we've got here Okay, on this side is a tapered hole. This is a, actually a screw with a, I think it's a 3 8 coarse thread. But it actually screws into the back of the ball. And the ball is where your clutch fork pivots. So what we're going to do, there's another hole here just like it. We'll clean everything out. And we'll flip that fork over. Put the ball on this side. And then uh, put her back together. Now one of the good things about... When you get to messing with something a little heavier or you mess with a piece of equipment you know like a you know a bigger truck or equipment is the throwout bearing now this throwout bearing when you replace it you're just replacing the bearing on the end you know a lot of the smaller stuff you're you're buying the whole piece so, uh, this throwout bearing you know it spins fine and it's good so we're not going to replace it but uh, but when you do it's a, it seems to be a lot easier you really just got to match up one that'll, uh, you know, fit onto here because you know we're dealing with uh, really transmission parts that I don't know what they are. I think we've we've about decided that it's, it was the Dodge transmission, but uh, it's a new process, same as the Ford, but you know the input shaft and everything I think is is a Dodge, and uh, you know the bell housing, if you notice, don't have any bolts in it, and what you have to do there's a there's a uh, plate under the bell housing you would drop it you drop the clutch pressure plate through the hole and then you'd have to take the flywheel off and drop it through the bottom of the bell housing and then the bolts for the bell housing are up inside of here and uh so it bolts on from the inside and uh which is pretty odd but uh you know that's just the for this particular application i'm sure they made well i know they made uh you know a lot of different stuff that bolted to the back of this block whether you put this in a you know mass ferguson tractor or you know a heister forklift or or whatever and uh i have actually picked up another one of these that is a a little bit bigger cubic inch uh it's a newer series engine it's a 2000 series and uh there's a few differences on it and i'm going to show you it here in a few minutes but i will uh i'll get this changed over and We'll get this, uh, get everything back together, get this transmission slipped back in. And like I said, we've got to, we'll go ahead and get it in there, uh, permanently. And, uh, you know, the, the bracket for the mount will, you know, I've got plenty of room. It's not a problem to make. So, anyway, all right, I'll show you more. Okay, folks, here's the, uh, here's the ball and the, the bolt. It's actually a fine thread, but. But uh, like I said, it just goes on the inside, and then uh, this goes through the, the tapered hole here and tightens down, and we're going to put it on this side, and here's our fork, and you know, the ball just slides right into the fork right there. But uh, shouldn't be a problem. Just clean it up good. I've already pulled our cover off our side, and uh, it'd be nice if we could transfer that cover over to the other side, you know, cover the hole, so we may do that before it's over with also. Okay. Okay, folks, here's the other Perkins that I had picked up. And uh, I've had this one for just a little while. Now, this was a running Perkins in a Heister forklift. 
The problem with this was that when they ran it for a little while, it would go to smoking. So I don't know if it was a fuel issue or, you know, if it, if it needs rebuilt. Either way, it's a later model engine, a lot later than the ones that we're messing with. The ones that we're messing with are, are early 80s, and this is up into the 90s, maybe even a 2000. But uh, the difference in this one, it's a rear sump oil pan, which sort of puts us into being able to stick it in just about anything when it comes to you know a, a vehicle with a cross member and uh, the other really good thing about it is it's already got an adapter plate on it that's a Chevrolet bell pattern and uh, you know it would be easy to to work with that put it in you know put a good transmission behind it 350 turbo or you know 700 R4 and uh, 400 turbo but this engine the other engines they're, like I said, 236 cubic inch, which is the same as a uh, 4BT Cummins, and uh, this is actually 258 cubic inches, so it's a bigger engine. If you notice, the exhaust manifold's got four ports, where the one we're messing with's only got two, and uh, I was told that these oil pans will fit over on it and on the other engine, but, you know, I'm not sure of that. But, uh, but one of the good things about the Perkins and the 236 that that uh, we put in the right rod and the one I'm putting in, I had just finished rebuilding one for uh bill down at Sanford Hydraulics just before I picked them engines up. And I would have actually could have sold him one of them engines uh, for a Heister forklift if, uh, if I'd have had them when I rebuilt that engine for him. But uh, the best part about these engines is you can go right on eBay and buy an entire rebuild kit and it comes with pistons sleeves uh, all the bearings and it actually comes with it new valves new valve springs new keepers uh, you name it I mean it's a it's a complete kit and it's not missing the rear seal like a lot of them are and where you've got to buy that separate but uh, that kit was only about four hundred and fifty dollars and this is a lot newer engine and the kit for this engine is somewhere between eight and nine hundred dollars and it's quite a bit of money but you know if somebody wanted to put that in something it'd be well worth it and uh, you know it's a director injected it's the injector pumps made completely different than the others uh, and a friend of mine works at the forklift company and he was actually he was taking parts off this one to use so. but uh, but this would be a real good one for another Another rat rod later, we'll do something with it, and uh, but I just wanted to show that to you, and we're going to go ahead and get back on the other one. Okay, folks, we've got everything changed over, got the transmission back on, and uh, we are ready to uh, pull the shifter back out and go ahead and get the forklift and pick this thing up and get it out of the shop and start sitting it inside the uh, 55. All right, I'll show you when we get it in. Okay, folks, we've got the engine sitting in it, uh, looking pretty good, everything's clear and good, as you can see we're uh, about a half inch, maybe three eighths of an inch off our steering box, but uh, like I said, when you give it gas, it picks up on this side, so that's not going to be a problem. Uh, one thing I want to say, this is a, an equipment motor, so if anybody's ever messed with tractors, John Deere, Case, anything else, Everything on them things are painted and when I say everything I mean hoses air clamps everything's all painted the same color So, you know, that's basically what I did on this. I, you know, I'm not too worried about it And it, this is not going to be a show truck, you know, I'm not putting this together for anything other than uh, to drive or whatever but uh, And you know it may get sold so you don't ever know but uh, clearance Plenty of clearance uh, as you can see these marks right here is the actual fender well, so uh, absolutely plenty of room. You know, nothing's going to be anything close. Uh, somebody has definitely changed out the heater core in this truck. It looks like they were supposed to come out here and here, and someone's chopped on it, so we're going to work on that a little bit. You know, we can angle it over, whatever we need to do to keep it away from our exhaust pipe, but, you know, it's nowhere really in the way. And uh, we've got plenty of room for our slave cylinder on this side. And uh, 
we'll still have enough room for the exhaust to go down through. We'll probably, we'll try to run four inch on this all the way back also. And uh, everything cleared good up front with uh, with our pan and everything. I, as you can see, I left a little extra, so I mean, we don't ever have to worry about it hitting, but also when you're putting the engine down and you're sitting it down in, you know, you need a little extra room to, to move it around to get it in, uh, you know, easy. And uh, Oil pan clearance. We've, uh, let me see. Let me get a tape measure and we're going to actually check that. Okay, oil pan clearance, we've got exactly sitting right here three inches and uh, I think that'll be fine it's a little closer than I had planned but you know I can I can block the motor mounts up a little bit if I need to right here uh, or we can uh, leave it because uh, I don't really see it as being a problem you know our, our suspension bottoms out at uh, what about two inches maybe let me check that real quick. Yeah, about two inches the suspension bottoms out, so it would probably be fine. Uh, so we may leave it, but you know, we'll we'll decide that as we go. We might uh, play around with the front of this a little bit, and get a couple people to bounce on it, and see what we figure out. So, all right, uh, more on it when I get more done. Okay, folks. Uh, decided to go ahead and get a different transmission uh, mount. Uh, this was on the transmission that I had bought for five dollars that parts transmission that I used the tail shaft off of and everything That's what was on it. I didn't like the way the bolt went through center. This is a 1988 Ford uh, mount for a factory Ford transmission uh, I liked the way that it mounted and uh, you know, it's regular course half-inch horse thread bolts and It's just a lot easier when you're making a cross member to make it and use this and drop right down through the holes than really what it is to do this. I mean, we could have done it, but I think it's $8.99. I mean, they're cheap. So that's what we're going to use. So we're going to get to work on the rear cross member now. Okay, we've got our mount on, and it looks like we're just going to be, right here's the frame, bottom of the frame and bottom frame on the other side. It looks like the, the frame's going to run about right through here. So, you know, we're a little low. I don't want to go up anymore with the transmission. Uh, I want to make sure this not only clears good, but we're going to have to bring this down into a two-piece drive shaft. And now you can get a drive shaft that's got a slip joint in it that bolts on each end like this. But you know, with the distance, because this is a short transmission, I want to run a two-piece. And uh, I've actually got a two-piece laying over here. It's out of a one-ton Chevrolet truck, and we'll figure out what we need for a front yoke and probably a Ford truck like the last one. And then. Uh, we will uh, also figure out what we need for a rear one, which will be a GM, but probably smaller than what we've got. But we can do anything we need to do with the drive shaft, whether it's make bushings or, you know, to, if you get a smaller yoke, you can fit it in or, you know, whatever. It won't be a problem. Okay, folks, here's what we've got. I really didn't want to use a uh, channel for the cross member. I wanted to use a, you know, a, a cross member out of something different, but... Uh, I didn't, uh, I don't really have time to go pull, be pulling stuff off in the field, and uh, so I figured I'd just make one up. I mean, you can't see it under here anyway, but uh, this is channel iron, and uh, it's actually some stuff that was uh, shelving material that I had bought off of a guy, and, uh, you know, used stuff, come out of a factory. But uh, you can see what our height is. I've got my transmission really where I want it, so we've got, you know, about an inch there, and of course it's showing a little over an inch here, but I mean, when you, this is rubber mount, so you can actually move it, but uh, what I'm going to do, you know, I, I put a new mount on, I started from the center, and uh, went in, drilled the holes, and got it on here, and I've made sure that, you know, the, these holes was where they needed to be to make this exactly center, because I know our engine is centered in the front, so I wanted to make sure we center it in the back. And this frame width on the outside outside is 34 inches, which is common for a, a truck frame. And uh, so what I did was make this 20, I mean 38 inches. So we got two inches overhang on each side. So what we'll do is put a piece of angle, you know, down the side of the frame and then outside of the plate this way. And we'll drill it and bolt it. Now we'll be able to move it up and down on the side of the frame at whatever height we want it at. 
and that'll you know solve all the problems with our height because I, I want to put the transmission where it's at I don't want to adjust the transmission you know to my mount I want to make my mount to my you know where I've got my transmission so uh, we're gonna leave it right where it's at uh, I'm gonna get some angle cut get on there uh, we can weld to the side of the frame. That's not a big deal. You know, everybody I'm sure knows that I don't want to weld on the flame. So uh, that's what we've got left. We're going to drill and bolt it. But I'm going to end this one here and we'll get back on, on the next one. Appreciate everybody watching. Bye.